We each represent close to a quarter of a million people who reelected us to come down here and ask questions. I mean, that's what we're tasked to do. And it's very unfortunate, and there are other things, right, but, but there are other things in play which cause four constitutional amendments, each of which should have gotten its own day, to be crammed down everybody's throats, causing a situation whereby legitimate questions can't be asked. So, but let me just ask my Any two questions quick questions about the bills. About you have the to bills. vote on yes. you ask them. Oh, well, great. Okay. Assemblyman, we're, friend. we're friends. Assemblyman <laughs> Caputo, you know that I have had a different um, philosophy on the gaming issue than even my colleague here, because I represent areas of northern New Jersey. My questions are posed in reading the language, and the devil's always in the details, and I understand that there's a huge compromise going on here where the Senate president, if, you know, it was up to him, 99.9% .9 of the revenue generated from this would probably go to Atlantic and Camden counties. But <laughs> you know, we currently have a situation with seven sponsors from just Bergen County or people who represent Bergen County alone, as well as people from Hudson, as well as yourself on this. However, because of the constitutional dedication of the way that the funds are allocated, first off, in putting together this bill, was there a presumption that Atlantic City will never be able to stand on its own financially? Because this goes out over 25 years with a very significant portion of the revenue raised being constitutionally dedicated with no flexibility to Atlantic City. So what happens if Atlantic City becomes financially stable? We have no flexibility in reallocating those monies. Well, we could always go back and put another constitutional amendment on. But the, the fact is Atlantic City does need to be assisted. And I know you're right. It is a very, very long time to to pour resources into, the, into that place. But the fact is, Atlantic City has done a lot for the state of New Jersey over the years. They promoted, they, they, they uh, uh, gave us hundreds of millions of dollars worth of tax dollars that were spent all over the state. They provided a lot of jobs for the state, a lot of construction jobs. So we just can't ignore the fact that they're, they're troubled at this time. You may be right, maybe it's going on for too long a period. I'm not going to argue with that. But the fact is, this is the best we could do at this time. It's the very best compromise that we can try to reach at this time uh, to make something uh, that will we'll win on the ballot. There's two challenges here. One is to get it on the ballot, and the other is to win the confidence of the people of the state. So we're talking about the north and south, and we can't have that tension. We've got to have both ends of the state working together for economic survival. And I believe that this is a, a way to do that. That brings me up to my last and follow-up question. Representing 20 municipalities in the most populous county in the state, um, Bergen County, as we stand today, disproportionately funds the entire remainder of the state, right. which for a period of time was okay, but we're losing major corporate headquarters. Right. We have people who are barely getting by paying exorbitant property taxes, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 a year for living in a home on a 50 by 75 foot lot because we send over 30 percent of the state budget down. We receive less than 3 percent of that money back. My greatest concern in reading the details on this is that there is no dedication whatsoever to providing any of the tax revenue generated back to the host communities for added infrastructure costs, for, you know, a lot of the things that we've seen that has occurred in Atlantic City where supplemental amounts have had to be given, there's zero dollars allocated for our communities to handle any of that type of stuff. And I was wondering, in drafting and putting this together, particularly with so many people representing the areas in which these casinos would in all likelihood end up. Is there any flexibility to go back on that issue and instead of allocating 63% to solely seniors and disabled throughout the entire state, to allocate a small portion of that to deal with 
the added infrastructure, things that are taking place in the communities that are generating this revenue. Well, you know, there's a lot of different ways we could have done this. We could have, we could have apportioned money for distressed seashore, seashore resorts that have been hit by Sandy. We could have given distressed cities money. But what we did was we augmented the amount of money going, the existing money going for seniors and disabled and tax relief for them. And then we put another 52 percent of the 63 percent back into that category. And the people that are suffering the most in terms of high taxes are the seniors. So this is where we felt our priority is at, the, at that particular time. I, I, I would have liked to have done more, uh, but believe it or not, I'm not the only one in this process. And I'm not looking to blame anyone, but I think this is – we're trying to be collaborative as much as we can. And there's only so much we can put in there, only so much we can include. But I think it's a very fair distribution at this point. And I promise this is the last question. Thank you. So the areas in which these casinos may end up will get zero dollars for those items based upon how this is – currently conceived? I, I'm not in a position to answer that question at this time. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Right.